Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to start with the demonstration of infratemporal fossa. The infratemporal fossa, it is the space beneath the base of the skull between the side walls of the pharynx and the ramus of the mandible. This space is going to communicate with the temporal fossa through a gap deep to the zygomatic arch. It is also referred as Parapharyngeal space or lateral pharyngeal space. So now moving on to the boundaries of the uh, infratemporal fossa. First of all, talking about the roof of the infratemporal fossa. Roof of the infratemporal fossa is formed by the greater wing of the sphenoid, or you can say that uh, the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. This is the greater wing of the sphenoid, as you can see. And this is the surface which is going to be acting as the roof of the this fossa. This greater wing of the sphenoid is passed by the two uh, foramens. This is foramen ovale, this one, and just behind to that there is foramen spinosum. After that, we move on to the medial wall. Medial wall of the Infratemporal fossa is going to be formed by the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. This is your lateral pterygoid plate, which is going to be present over here. This one. This outer surface or the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate is going to act as the, you know, the medial boundary or the medial wall. It is separated from the, you know, anterior wall by the pterygomaxillary fissure. This is the pterygomaxillary fissure. Here you can see that the anterior wall is going to be formed by the infratemporal surface of the body of the maxilla. This is the maxilla bone and this is the infratemporal surface of the maxilla. It is separated uh, from the roof of the orbit by the infraorbital fissure. We will be seeing that in the later on slides. Now after that we are having the lateral wall. Uh, before, um, the, in the case of the lateral wall, we are having the, it is going to be formed by the ramus of the mandible. So when the mandible is going to be present, it is going to be articulated. So that region is going to be forming the lateral wall. Floor. Floor is going to be formed by, you know, you know open and it is basically open and it is going to be extended up to the level of the base of the mandible. And then the posterior wall, it is formed by the stylet process of the temporal bone. So you can see here, this is the infratemporal fossa here. If I just make you revise it again, so this is your posterior wall. Posterior wall is going to be formed by the stylet process of the temporal bone. This is the stylet process. Here is the medial wall that is going to be formed by the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the anterior wall that is going to be formed by the infratemporal surface of the maxilla bone. The roof is going to be formed by the infratemporal surface of the sphenoid bone. Actually, I am not able to show you that right now in this picture. And uh, on the lateral aspect, the lateral wall is going to be formed by the ramus of the mandible. Now we move on to the communications. As this fossa is going to be communicated with different number of regions. So first of all, starting with above. Above, it is going to be communicated with the temporal fossa through a gap deep to the zygomatic arch. This is the zygomatic arch superior to which there is the or temporal fossa. Whenever you are just going downward, you can see that <clears throat> through this gap, uh, this is going to be communicated with the infratemporal fossa. Now, um, deep to the zygomatic arch into the you know and the middle cranial fossa through the foramen ovale and the foramen spinosum so this is about the infratemporal uh, this is about the pterygo, uh, you know uh, the infratemporal fossa uh, communicating with the temporal fossa and through this foramen ovale this is the foramen ovale and this is the foramen spinosum it is going to be communicating with the middle cranial fossa after that below it is going to continuous with the spaces of the neck lateral to the pharynx so below it is you know on the lateral art aspect it is going to be uh, you know forming like that it is going to be communicating with the lateral spaces of the neck what about superior aspect 
in the superior aspect uh, we can say that this anterior wall you know just anteriorly just superior to the anterior wall we are having the infraorbital fissure through which it is going to be uh, you know coming in communication with the infraorbital fissure up to with the orbit through this infraorbital fissure it is going to be communicating with the orbit now it is also going to be communicated through this uh, you know uh, door like uh, opening that is your pterygomaxillary fissure through this pterygomaxillary fissure it is going to be communicating with the pterygopalatine fossa so that's all about can you see here in this uh, animated part see superiorly it is going to be communicated with the temporal fossa anteriorly with the orbit via the infraorbital fissure and medially to the pterygopalatine fossa through pterygomaxillary fissure and superiorly from the to the medial cranial fossa through the foramen ovale and the foramen spinosum and inferiorly to the you know lateral spaces of the neck now we move on to the number of the muscles which are just present so there are basically you know four muscles which are the also known as the muscles of the mastications first of all starting with the temporalis muscle this is the temporalis muscle it is a fan shaped muscle this is the masseter muscle you can see here now this temporal muscle is you know coming from your superior temporal line and these are going to you know extending up till your uh, it is going to be inserting at the coronary process of the mandible bone now after that we are having this masseter uh, masseter muscle which is just having its attachment from the outer surface of the mandible or the lateral surface of the mandible it is going to be provide as a you know one of the strongest muscle or the powerful strong quadrangular muscle which is going to act in the case of the zygomatic process and you know uh, acting as the you know muscle of mastication it is going to be coming from the uh, you know originating from the basically uh, that was the insertion which i was talking about sorry and uh, it is originating from the lower aspect of the zygomatic arch and it is going to be inserting at the angle and the lateral surface of the mandibular ramus so this is how from superior to inferior this masseter muscle is going to be lying after that uh, these are again going to be supplied by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal lobe after that we are having the medial pterygoid and the lateral pterygoid muscle in the case of the medial pterygoid muscle the medial uh, this this muscle from the medial aspect which is going to be present this is the medial pterygoid muscle here on the inner view this is the inner view of the uh, you know or the you know posterior from a posterior view you can see your mandible and your skull region and here you can see there is one muscle that is going to be attaching so this is your medial pterygoid muscle that is uh, you know having its two heads the small superficial head of the muscle is coming from the maxillary tuberosity and the lateral surface of your pyramidal process of palatine bone just superiorly from this aspect okay and then uh, you know sorry this one this small superficial head then the large deeper head is going to be arising from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate this is the lateral pterygoid plate here this one and from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate the large head is going to be coming then its fibers are running downwards backwards and laterally and to be in inserted by a strong tendinous lamina into the posterior inferior surface of the medial surface of the angle of mandible so it is going up till the angle of the mandible here it is going to be supplied by nerve to the mylohyoid sorry sorry nerve to the uh, medial pterygoid which is the again the branch of the uh, uh, from the main trunk of the mandibular nerve now we move on to the lateral pterygoid muscle lateral pterygoid muscle it is the it is a key muscle of the infratemporal fossa it is short thick and conical muscle with its apex pointing backwards you can see it is a conical kind of muscle and apex is pointing backwards and it passes backwards and slightly laterally from the roof of the medial wall of fossa to the neck of the mandible so it is just going to be you know coming from the roof so it is having the two heads again there is upper smaller head and lower larger head upper smaller head is arising from the infratemporal surface 
and the crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid. Lower larger head is going to arise from the lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. And then the fibers of the two heads are going to run backwards and laterally and converge to form a thick tendon which is inserted into the pterygoid fovea on the front of the neck of the mandible and the articular disc and the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. So that's why it is very much important muscle here. Now supply, it is going to be supplied by the lateral pterygoid, uh, you know, uh, it is going to be supplied by the uh, branch from the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. Now this lateral pterygoid is going to act as a depressor of the mandible, whereas this medial pterygoid is going to be acting as the elevator, one of the elevator or the, you know, uh, the uh, which is going to elevate or closing the mouth, that kind of the movement is going to be happening. And apart from that, there could be the protrusion of the mandible, which is going to be done by this, uh, this muscle and the side to side movement of the mouth. Now we move on to the contents of the uh, infratemporal fossa. So here what we have done, the, uh, the, the uh, insertion of the uh, temporalis muscle has been cut down and it has been reflected upwards. And below, here you can see that there is the temporal bone. This is just the temporal fossa. And uh, you know, before that, I just want to say that the zygomatic arch has also been cut down. And that some part of the remus has, or, or remus of the you know mandible has also been cut down. So that's how you can see some different uh, you know neurovascular structures which are going to be present over here. Here you can see most superficially we are having the venous part. We are having the pterygoid venous plexus and the maxillary vein which is going to be formed by that so there is the it is just a you know short venous trunk the maxillary vein which is just going to accompany the you know uh, the maxillary artery i'll be going on to the maxillary artery as well but right now please just look at the superficial structures now the pterygoid venous plexus it is a network of very small veins that lie around and within the lateral pterygoid muscle and it is going to be you know communicating with the inferior ophthalmic vein by the infra, uh, inferior orbital fissure with the cavernous sinus by the emissary vein by foramen ovale with facial vein through the deep facial vein so this is how it is going to be uh, in communication with the different uh, regions basically here you can see this is the deep facial vein and this is your facial vein this is just present over here so one uh, one such um, communication I am able to show you here. Apart from that, we will move on to the later on aspect onto the maxillary artery. In the case of the maxillary artery, first of all, I just want to give you a pictorial representation how this, uh, you know, maxillary artery is going to be uh, present. Maxillary artery is the, one of the large terminal branch of the external carotid artery. It arises just behind the neck of the mandible and it is going to run horizontally forward up to, up to the lower border of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Now from here it is going to be you know turning upwards. Here it is sorry this is from a different aspect from uh, this is the external carotid artery. From uh, here just behind you know your neck of the mandible it is just going to be coming and just from here after that it is going to be continuing just you know near to the lower border of the lateral pterygoid muscle so the muscle from uh, this much part up till the before just uh, you know it's coming in contact with the in communication with the uh, lateral pterygoid muscle it is going to be called as your first part of the mandibular now or the first mandibular part after that the uh, you know the artery which is going to be present over in this uh, you know relation with the close relation with the lateral pterygoid muscle that is going to be called as the second part or the pterygoid part now there is a third part which is just going to enter inside the pterygopalatine fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure that is going to be called as your pterygopalatine part or the third part. Here we are going to focus more on the first and the second part. Now moving on to the first part, the branches from the first part of the uh, your uh, this uh, first mandibular part. It is just lying posterior to the you know lateral pterygoid muscle this is the lateral pterygoid muscle somewhere here just behind this artery you can see this is the lateral pterygoid muscle just behind that 
so the artery which is just coming from its you know uh, detachment from the uh, your whenever it is just going to branching out from the external carotid artery up till the you know level of your pterygoid muscle that is going to be the first part so this is the first part that is going to be lying and just traveling deep to the neck of the mandible now this is the second part okay which is just going to be lying superficial or deep to the you know lateral pterygoid muscle basically it is just more more commonly it is present superficially and then this is the third part which is just going to enter inside the pterygopalatine fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure now we look uh, we we are going to look at the different branches of the first mandibular uh, first branch or the first uh, uh, you know the mandibular branch or the mandibular part of the uh, maxillary artery so there are number of branches first of all there is the deep auricular artery this is the deep very thin artery here you can i think you can make it out this is the very thin artery that is your deep auricular artery which is going to be present it is passing upwards and backwards to enter the external acoustic meatus by piercing the floor and it is going to supply the skin of external acoustic meatus and the outer surface of the tympanic membrane so this is your uh, deep auricular now then there is the second branch that is known as the anterior tympanic artery this anterior tympanic artery it is it is going to enter the tympanic cavity by passing through the petrotympanic fissure and it is going to you know this second one this very small thin stump of the artery you know this is going to uh, supply the inner surface of the tympanic membrane the outer surface is by the deep auricular artery the inner surface is by the anterior tympanic artery now we move on to the middle meningeal artery so this is the third branch and this middle meningeal artery is very important content of the foramen spinosum it is the largest meningeal branch it is going to supply the meninges as well as the skull bone clinically it is most important branch of the maxillary artery the middle meningeal artery arises from the first part of the maxillary artery it ascends upward deep to the lateral pterygoid behind the mandibular nerve now uh, this uh, passing between the two roots of the uh, you know it is just going to be a pass from here and there are certain number of the nerves which are again going to be related with this artery so that's why it is more or less important it is going to have the two divisions the anterior division and the posterior division so uh, one such anterior division is very much important you know with the uh, you know correlation with the tergion and the clinical significance of the tergion so that is coming from this middle meningeal artery only after that we are having the accessory meningeal artery that i am not able to show you that right now because it is very smaller branch and then we are having the inferior alveolar artery or the dental artery here you can see that there is very small stump this is just going to enter inside the uh, you know uh, it is just running downward between this phenomandibular ligament and the ramus of the mandible it just enters the uh, mandibular foramen and runs through the mandibular canal it is going to supply premolar molar premolar tooth and the adjoining gums it then divides into the mental and the incisive branches so from here it is going to just supply a uh, whole of this region after that uh, you know this is the more or less about the different branches which are coming from the first part so i'm just going to make you a quick revision so the very first branch which is coming that is your deep auricular artery which is going to supply the external acoustic meatus the skin of the external acoustic meatus and it is going to supply the outer surface of your tympanic membrane then there is the anterior tympanic artery that is going to be you know passing through the petrotympanic fissure and it is going to supplying the inner surface of the tympanic membrane then there is the middle meningeal artery which is going to enter to this foramen spinosum and then it is going to uh, uh, supply the meninges as well as the skull it is going to provide two main, uh, main branches or the divisions that is your anterior division and the posterior division then there is you know one uh, you know major lower branch that is going to be called as your inferior alveolar artery which is going to be or uh, it is also known as the dental artery which is going to enter inside the mandibular fossa and it is going to supply the rest of the regions now we move on to the second uh, you know pterygoid uh, second part of the pterygoid part of the maxillary artery it is again going to have some number of the branches 
so um, you know basically these branches are the muscular branches okay so we are having the different uh, number of the branches that is your pterygoid branches mesenteric artery the deep temporal artery so i'll be just going one by one so this is the mesenteric artery which is going to be you can see here it is going to supply uh, you know it just passes laterally through the mandibular notch and it is going to supply the mesenteric uh, sorry mesenteric muscle you know from its deeper surface so suppose the mesenteric muscle it was present here actually it has been removed in this specimen uh, but it is just going to pass through the your uh, mesenteric your uh, mesenteric notch or the mandibular notch and then it is going to supply the mesenteric muscle then we are having the pterygoid branches so these are the pterygoid branches here from the pterygoid branches there will be the you know stumps of these arteries which are going to supply the medial pterygoid and the lateral pterygoid muscle actually this is the lateral pterygoid muscle and medial pterygoid muscle is somewhere here so in both aspect it is going to supply the both of the pterygoids then we are having the deep temporal arteries deep temporal arteries are going to ascend up and you know on the uh, lateral aspect of the skull deep to the temporal muscle where they are going to supply basically they are two in numbers so uh, we can call that as a anterior deep temporal artery and the posterior deep temporal artery so this is how it is going to be supplying the different parts now after that uh, this is more or less about the different number of the branches now we move on to the sensory supply basically the face or the, this region is going to be supplied by the mandibular uh, division of the trigeminal nerve and your mandibular nerve is just going to come from the foramen ovale as you know this foramen ovale is one such you know acting as a communication pathway to the communication between the infratemporal fossa and your medial cranial fossa through which uh, you know uh, your mandibular nerve is going to be coming out now this mandibular nerve i just want to give you a picture or a presentation before moving on to the specimen pictures so you can look at here this this is the uh, you know fifth cranial nerve and this is the trigeminal ganglion from where your three different divisions are going to be rising this is the ophthalmic division maxillary division and the mandibular division now this mandibular division just behind your you know lateral pterygoid muscle you know it is just going to this from this it is just you know going to enter inside the infratemporal fossa through the foramen ovale and from which there will be a nerve which is going to enter inside the infratemporal fossa this nerve is going to lie deep behind the uh, lateral pterygoid muscle and when this must uh, this sorry this nerve is going to lie behind deep to the uh, deep behind to the lateral pterygoid muscle and from which when when exactly it is just coming outside it is going to give a meningeal branch this meningeal branch is going to come upward and it is going to enter again the cranial fossa through the foramen spinosum so this is how your uh, you know meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve is going to entering inside here now if i say about the this was more or less about the uh, you know um, the course it is majorly or they having a large sensory fibers or large sensory roots which are going to be coming from this artery now um, then from here we are having one branch that is known as your nerve to uh, you know mylohyoid muscle which is going sorry a nerve to medial pterygoid muscle which is you know arising from the medial aspect of the main trunk so that is how it is going to be supplying here now it is having the two divisions it is having uh, the anterior divisions and the posterior division so when it is just coming outside it is going to divide into the two parts the anterior division and the posterior divisions so here you can see the part which is lying uh, more anteriorly and superiorly that is going to be called as the anterior, anterior division this is mainly motor and give branches to the muscles of the mastication except the medial pterygoid you know which is going to be supplied uh, by the nerve to medial pterygoid from the uh, direct branch you know from the direct main trunk we are having two branches only that is one is the you know men meningeal branch which is going entering to the middle cranial fossa through your foramen spinosum and other is your from its medial aspect there will be one more branch that is coming to the medial pterygoid muscle after that this nerve is going to divide into the two parts one is your uh, your anterior division other will be your posterior division anterior division is more or less 
uh, motor in nature. It is going to supply the different muscles of mastication like masseter nerve through the mesetric nerve, temporal nerve, or the sorry, temp uh, temporalis muscle through deep temporal nerve, lateral pterygoid muscle through the nerve to lateral pterygoid. And there is a buccal nerve, you know, it is going to contain some sensory fibers. Uh, uh, and it is going to emerging between the lateral pterygoid and courses uh, go, it is going to just emerging between the two heads of the lateral pterygoid and it is going to course downward to, uh, onto the buccinator muscles giving, the, uh, giving its branches to the skin of the cheek. Then it is going to supply you know cheek, the mucous membrane of the cheek and the gum region of the lower jaw uh, just opposite to the molars and the premolars. So it is going to give sensory. This is this smaller part. There is just small small uh, you know sensory part which is going to be supplied by the sensory division now we are moving on to the uh, this posterior division posterior division of the mandibular nerve it is going to have uh, auricular temporal nerve this is the auricular temporal branch you know it is going to be arising by the two roots which are just you know uh, after encircling the middle meningeal artery so here you can see this is the middle meningeal artery in between them if I draw middle meningeal artery for you, this one, this is your middle meningeal artery, this small part. Can you see from both the aspect, the two roots which are, you know, just coming, one is this one, other is this one, just directly superior. Okay, so please just have your focus in this region. So, uh, please see. There is one branch, there is other one. This is the auricular temporal nerve, which is just going to encircling the your middle and uh, you know middle angel artery and unite to form the single trunk. So this is the single trunk. It is going to run backward behind the uh, you know backward between the neck of the mandible and this phenomandibular ligament and behind to the neck of the mandible. Uh, it just going to you know. Uh, supply uh, it is going to you know having a different number of the auricular branches that is going to supply the skin of the tragus upper part of the ear pinna you know external auditory meters tympanic membrane the lower part uh, of these auricular branches will be going to supply by the you know greater auricular nerve and the auricular part of the uh, vagus nerve that is going to be coming in the ear part okay so uh, after that you know it is having some articular branches to the temporomandibular joint it is also having the superficial temporal branches that is going to supply the skin of the temple and it is uh, it also supply the secretomotor fibers to the parotid gland after that we are having the lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve so um, in the case of please look at here in case uh, here we are having the two basic branches so this is your lingual nerve and this is your inferior alveolar nerve now this inferior alveolar nerve is again important it is one of the you know now also known as the dental nerve and whenever the dentist in the case of the dental surgeries so the this nerve is going to be blocked to uh, you know do perform the different number of the surgeries so this is the uh, you know inferior alveolar nerve this is the uh, you know lingual nerve this lingual nerve uh, is just going to be uh, you know it is a smaller terminal branch of the posterior division it is sensory to the mucous membrane of anterior two-third of the tongue except the valid papillae except the valid papillae so this is how it, this lingual nerve is going to be supplying here now uh, moving on to the you know the other branches which we are which we can see in this region so this will be your this is the part of your quarter tympani which is going to be lie over here it is the slender branch of the facial nerve it contains sensory and the parasympathetic preganglionic fibers it arises from the facial nerve in the facial canal within the posterior wall of the you know tympanic cavity and it just run across the lateral wall of this cavity and escape from uh, you know it through the petrotympanic fissure it then grooves medial to the spine of sphenoid and running anterior laterally sorry uh, running anterior inferiorly deep to the lateral pterygoid uh, lateral pterygoid to join the posterior aspect of the lingual nerve so uh, i hope you can see that this is going to be joining to this lingual nerve over here 
Now it is just going to supply, uh, you know, the secretomotor fibers of the sub, uh, submandibular and the sublingual gland through the submandibular ganglion and carry, you know, taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue. So this is how it is going to be supplying here. So please just look at the look at the different structures here. This is the inferior alveolar nerve, and uh, this is your cauda tympani branch, and which is going to mix up with the lingual nerve. Then uh, we move on to the, uh, you know, this inferior alveolar nerve. This is, it is a larger terminal branch of the posterior division of the mandibular nerve. It is a mixed nerve. It receives all the motor fibers of the trigeminal nerve. Now it is having certain branches. So here I am able to show you one branch that is nerve to mylohyoid. Please see, uh, see this muscle, this, this nerve. You know, uh, it arises from the inferior alveolar uh, you know it is just rising from the inferior alveolar nerve before it entering to the uh, before the entrance of the inferior alveolar nerve to the mandibular canal it just pierces this phenomandibular ligament to reach to the mylohyoid uh, groove it supplies the mylohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of the digastric muscle then there are the dental dental branches the mental nerve which is just coming out from the you know mental foramen and just superior, just anterior to that, there will be the incisive branches, which are going to supply the canines and the incisive teeth. Roots. Okay. So this is more or less about the, uh, you know, the inferior division. So here you can see these are the, you know, branches from the anterior divisions. Uh, this will be the deep temporal anterior branch. Again, this is the temporalis muscle, which is reflected. This is again the, you know, deep temporal now from the posterior branch. So there are two types of such branches. Now, you can see this is the uh, mesetric nerve going to supply the uh, mesetra muscle, nerve to lateral pterygoid. These are again very smaller muscular branches and this is the buccal nerve. Here you can see. Here uh, you can see again the, you know, the different number of the branches. This is the middle meningeal artery. And here I just want to tell you about the otic ganglion. This is, it is a small parasympathetic ganglion which is going to be connected to the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve and it is going to provide the relay station to the secretomotor fibers to the paratric gland. Topographically, it is just, you know, closely related to the mandibular nerve, but functionally it is related to the glossopharyngeal nerve. You know, it is, it is present just below the, uh, your foramen ovale. It is related to different structures laterally it is related to the mandibular nerve medially it is related to the tensor palatine muscle posteriorly there will be the middle meningeal artery and anteriorly there will be the medial pterygoid muscle so this is the anterior posterior uh, you know lateral we have just reflected that and on the medial aspect we are having the tensor palatine muscle so that is going to be present over here this is one such uh, picture uh, from our cadaveric part. So here you can see this is the temporalis muscle. This is the cut end of uh, the uh, remus of the mandibel. Here, uh, this is the hypoglossal nerve actually. Um, I'm not able to show you that the direct branches, this is the external carotid artery, which is going to be present over here. Um, I hope you had understand the different parts related to the a morphological aspect of the infratemporal fossa. Apart from that, there is one more joint which is going to be present inside the infratemporal fossa that is going to be discussed in a separate session. Thank you for attending the session.